So you should be able to go back and forth. If you're given the field, you should be able to figure out the force. And if you're given the force, you should be able to figure out the field using this equation and these ideas here. Now remember that the field doesn't just come into existence magically, it's being generated by a source charge. Now in all the little examples that I gave you, I wasn't even mentioning the source charge, and that's pretty typical. Usually when we use this approach, in many cases, they will just tell you the field, and you won't even talk about the source. You know that there must be a source somewhere, but you won't worry about what it is. However, there are other types of problems where you do have to figure out how big the field is from the source. So we also need to be able to know how to go from here to here. What we've done for the last few minutes is see how to go back and forth between the field and the force on the test charge. Now we have to see how to go back and forth between the source and the uh, field. And again, it depends on the shape of the source. It could be a line or an infinite, sh or an infinite sheet or a sphere. Well, this week, or last week anyway, for this week's homework, you're just focusing basically on point charges. Well, here's the basic formula for point charges. And if you're careful, you can usually use this for spherical distributions as well. But right now, we're just focusing on point charges. Now, as usual, we're only going to use this formula for magnitudes. So I'm going to put in some dots here. Let me actually write that over here instead. So here we have k times the source charge over r squared. By the way, um, notice that it makes sense here that we're putting in the source charge and not the test charge, because it's the source charge that's creating the electric field. Mm -hmm. So that reminds me, I made a big mistake here. I forgot to mention that this is the test charge. But that's actually really important to have in your formulas, because one of the biggest mistakes people make is confusing the source charge and the test charge. So I shouldn't have done that. So you should definitely go back and be careful and put in that this is the test charge over here. If you think about all the problems we just did, all the problems we just did, we were just focusing on the test charges. So uh, a common mistake people make is using this formula when they should use this one, or this one when they should use this one. Well, you have to ask, am I focusing on the source charge or the test charge? And that tells you which formula is appropriate. Unfortunately, in the textbook, oftentimes they leave out these subscripts. But it's better whenever you see a formula to ask whether it deals with the source charge or the test charge. By the way, this formula should just be very easy to prove. We know from here that the electric field is the force over the test charge. So the force comes from Coulomb's law. For the electric force, we could just plug in Coulomb's law. Uh, but then the Q naughts cancel. And you're left with this formula here. So this formula is really Coulomb's law for electric field. Um, again, this is the relationship between the electric field and the force. So you can see what happened to the Q naught. What happened to the Q naught? Well, it drops out when you divide by Q naught over here. So this is a, a reasonable formula. And this also makes sense. This says the bigger the charge is, the bigger the electric field it's going to generate. And let's say that you are very far from the source. If you're far from the source, would that tend to make the electric field big or small? Small. Right. That's just common sense. But that's what this formula tells us as well. The bigger r is in the denominator, the smaller this fraction would be. So that's also common sense. The field is directly proportional to the source charge, and it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So let's emphasize again that the test charge does not appear here. Because remember, there could be an electric field at a point in space even if there's no test charge at all. And also, if you change the test charge, that does not affect the electric field. The electric field only depends on the source, not on the test charge. The test charge doesn't uh, alter the field. Now we also, since the electric field is a vector, we have to know how to find its direction. And we'll just memorize a trick for that. If the source charge is positive, then the direction of the electric field is away from the source charge. And if the source charge is negative,
then the direction of the electric field is toward the source charge. For positive source charges, the direction of the electric field is away from the source charge. And for negative source charges, the direction of the electric field is toward the source charge. So what's the direction of the electric field at this point? Um, Up, down, left, or right? It's right. Since this is a positive source charge, the electric field should be pointing away from the source charge. Mm -hmm. What's the direction over here? Down. How about here? To the left. How about here? Uh, out. <laughs> kind of to the northwest. Yeah. Good. So, if you drew all the electric field vectors, they would all be pointing away from that source charge. Mm -hmm. What's the direction of the electric field over here? Uh, pointing toward the source charge. Which in this case would be down. Mm -hmm. That's right. And over here? To the left. Right. All the electric field vectors here would be pointing towards this negative source charge. Mm -hmm. So. As usual, we don't need a formula to figure out these directions. Your instructor might have a way of figuring out the directions with formulas, but I think people just get confused with that. It's better just to use the formula for the magnitude. Mm -hmm. So we just plug in positive numbers here, and then we just use this verbal description to find the directions. All right, um, so I, I should have mentioned this at the start, but one thing I would do after the day is get a blank piece of paper and put this flow chart on a separate piece of paper so it doesn't get lost in your notes, because this is something that's easy to forget as time goes on. The big mistake that people make is they don't realize that there's two different parts of this flow chart. There's the relationship between the source charge and the field, and there's the relationship between the field and the test charge. And oftentimes, people use the wrong side of the flow chart because they don't even realize there is a flow chart. Mm -hmm. For example, um, there's two different ways to find directions. There's one way to find the direction based on the source charge, and a totally different rule for directions based on test charges. So you have to ask yourself, and should I use this set of rules or this set of rules? Yeah. So, so how do you know whether you're, you're treating something as a source charge or a test charge? Well, if you're treating something as the source of the electric field, then it's the source charge. Yeah. And if you're, treat, if you're focusing on something that's feeling a force, that's the test charge. That's how you tell the difference. And remember, that's arbitrary. Uh, because this is also generating a field that exerts a force on this. We just have chosen to, to ignore that. So it really is good when you're doing problems to label things with a not or an S based on whether they're the source charge or the test charge. And again, people oftentimes use this formula when they should use this or vice versa. So you have to make sure you know which formula is appropriate. So how would you go about finding the electric field at this point? Um, the electric field between itself, or that it's giving off, or? The electric field, uh, the electric field from this charge, that's right. Good. That was a good step. Why don't we call this the source charge? Um, okay. And then um, you can find the magnitude of the electric field using that equation. This one? No. No. This one. Good. Um, good. And you know that... What would we plug in for K? K is 9 times 10 to the 9. And for QS? Is 3 times 10 to the negative 6. Right. And we don't bother putting in the sign. 
because this is not supposed to give us the signs. And for R? Uh, 4 squared. That's right. Good. We put in 4 and then we would square it and then we just crank out that answer. Good. But that would only give us the magnitude. For a positive source charge, the field is away from the source charge. So we could say it's to the right. All right. And so that would probably be positive or negative. Uh, positive. Yeah, if we take, take our normal positive directions, then this would be positive.